How are we doing everyone? Mark Joe Szymanski, owner, founder, find a tech here with you again today. I want to make this video as a follow up to another video that I made, uh, I want to say like three months ago or something like that, end of 2022. Uh, I'll leave a card to it if you haven't seen it yet, but I got a lot of good feedback on it and it was called, the premise of it, I think the title was, is, is there a limit to what WordPress can do? Like, have I reached it? That was the concept of it. That was the overarching theme. And I've just been, you know, obviously operating this agency for more time than that now, three more months. And just within that period of time, I've learned some things. Uh, like I mentioned, I got some great feedback in the comments section of that video because I think that there's a lot of people in this position um, that have used WordPress or have built an agency or just build, you know, websites here and there via WordPress. And then they want to do something that's like bigger, more, you know, uh, you know, custom or just more functionality and stuff. And they're kind of confused and don't know where to go. I'm not saying in this video that I have all the answers. I just have a few more things that I've discovered and I just wanna share them with you uh, in a quick video here. The first thing I would say is that one of the points that I made, and at the time that I made that video, the real reason I made that video as I discuss in there is that I was going through an actual project problem with one of the websites that I was creating for a client. And there was so much going on on that website. It was great. It was incredible from the um, from the feature set and the functionality that you could use. Like from a user coming to that website, interacting, being able to buy membership, uh, log in, watch videos, download resources, like all sorts of stuff. There was uh, a lot of value to the user in that regard. <clears throat> However, the and the way that I built it, I will say. I don't build things in my, you know, at this point in my development career, I'm not building websites willy nilly with random plugins. I'm always using like the least amount of plugins possible. I'm always trying to find things that like, I don't, I don't want to have a lot of overlap, right? Plugins that do the same things we, you know, and just the most efficient ways to do that. It's difficult as you build websites for a client to keep it as tight as possible. I mean, you can manage expectations and you could do a better job of scoping projects than I have done in the past, certainly, and that would definitely help. But let's say that you're halfway through a project and a client says, hey, I really want to do functionality X. Even if you say to them, hey, this is going to cost extra, they may say yes. And then that may, ch you know, it, th that's a different discussion. That's more of like the business side of things, making sure you're getting paid for the work that you're doing. But my point being is from the technical aspect, if you were going to you know, add that functionality, even if you're getting paid for it, maybe it changes the project a little. Maybe it changes the, the, the development. Maybe you have to add a new plugin. And the the point that that I was at, at, at that in that case was that that was happening a lot. We were changing the scope because we always had like different uh, features and functionality, which is great. I'm more than happy to add more things and, and learn how to implement d different things and all that sort of stuff. And uh, but that was happening a lot, and so we had to get more plugins and more functionality, and it just got bloated. And then we got to the point where it was like it was kind of slow, and then the only the only way to um, that I knew at the time to speed up the site is to add more resources, like increase the server size, which does work. I mean that is a, that is a uh, a a solution. Uh, I would say in in most cases though, it's not like the best or the only solution, and you should probably. If I was smarter at that point, I would have done things kind of differently to try to see if if, if the results would have been different, or if you know if if I, if I could have had uh, better results without having to do that. So all that being said, kind of as a recap of where I was at, me kind of looking back at it now too, I just rewatched that video, and and that all kind of came back to me, and I totally forgot about that past video there uh, that you guys uh, gave great comments on until today because. I realized once I watched it that I have solved a lot of those issues. And, and again, like I said, one of those ways is just caching and optimization. There's a lot of plugins out there. I'm not gonna go into deep depth here. I mean, you could try WP Rocket. You could try uh, if your server has caching built in. Um, there's a lot of options. But the one that is actually crazy is Nitro Pack. And I have a video on Nitro Pack. I'll link it. I, it was, I think it was one of the last videos that I made. And uh, I'm not trying to sell Nitro Pack to you. I mean, if you want to use it, there is an affiliate link or just go to the website and download it yourself. If you don't want to, you know, uh, use the affiliate link, that's fine. But I'm just telling you, like, it has changed the way that I look at optimization and caching and site speed. 
uh, because it, it just works and you just implement it and literally like two settings and boom, it's good. It went from, you know, our find a tech site went from like an F to an A on GT metrics, basically right after we implemented it. I'm not saying that it's going to work in every case. I don't know. I don't know what uh, it does and how it affects sites. Like one of the concerns that I have that I have not tested yet and what will at some point in the future is how does it affect websites where where people log into, right? Like does it, does it, and maybe there's settings and stuff that you tweak, but I'm saying like in a platform that is membership based, will the back end of the site be as fast as like the marketing front end of the site? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know what you can cache. I think caching by its nature is very difficult on a website that is super dynamic, not not in the sense of the content that it's served, but like the, the sense of the fact that like, uh, you know, any sort of platform where you log into and you have users that log in, like their data is always changing. Like if you had like a comment section under a video or something, how does that, you know, the cache would need to, I would think need to be like refreshed and stuff would need to be force reloaded quite frequently, right? Uh, I don't know, I mean, these are hypotheses. But I am saying though, that without a doubt, uh, that is, if you have a bunch of plugins and they're all like, it's the least amount of plugins you can have, but you are still have a bunch of functionality and your site's slow, definitely look into some sort of optimization or caching. My, my recommendation would be Nitro Pack, but uh, that has definitely helped me in some circumstances. The next thing I would say is, you know, in, you know, conjunction with those, those basic standard practices and then, you know, least amount of plugins, and then uh, you know some caching and optimization is I got some comments about what seem to be like applications, right? Like people wanting to build things that are actually more than websites. Now I can't really speak to that. I've tried that a couple times. I've tried a, uh, a platform called Adalo before, and I think there's another one called like V1 or something, if I'm remembering correctly, that I, I don't think I had access to. Um, but here's here's my again, hypothesis, on the problem here. I've wanted to do this before. I had a brand called Fuel by Progress. I have a website for it. It's still there. It's really not operational though. Um, we'll come back to it later, later, in, uh, later in our lifetime, in our career. But I had a website and it was a podcast, it was apparel, and it was community. That was kind of the idea. And I was modeling off a bunch of different things. I built the website and I liked the website, slow, very slow, because I didn't know anything that I do now. But but I liked I liked the concepts and and the and the vibe and everything like that. So we build that website and then I'm thinking, hmm, is there a way that I could make like an app out of this, like Nike for instance, right? <laughs> Ridiculous example to compare it to. But Nike has a website. You can go to their website on your phone and then they're probably going to get you to download the app on iOS or Android because the experience is going to be much better, right? So I think that the trouble is that those apps, websites are probably not built in, you know, WordPress. Maybe some of these bigger brands are built in like Shopify or whatever. And, but there's like this weird position where it's like, like there's a website and then there's like a mobile app. And how do you define both and what gets overlapped if like both of them have, you know, those types of things. There's a lot of websites out there that don't have the platform as a website. Like, so for instance, you know, you go to, you know, webappxyz.com. On that website, it's just a, like, uh, let's use a ridiculous example, but like that will serve the point. Like Angry Birds. You don't, I mean, maybe you can now, but at, at, but like the point is that a game like that, you don't play on the computer per se. They built that on iOS and Android, but there probably is a website that is the marketing side of it. And it just says like about the game or whatever or about the app. And then it says it has links to download, but they're not on the your your desktop. They're on you know those those application stores, right? So these aren't you know uh, uh, concepts. These are concepts uh, concepts that you're probably familiar with. But I've gotten um, feedback from people, and you know like somebody said like so what did I decide? They're in the same boat, and they want to do like applications and things. And I don't really have an answer to it. But what I can say is that if you want to, like you have to really think about it. it this is too specific of a, of a question to give a direct answer to. But if you are, if you want to build apps, WordPress is probably not the solution because there's only been two instances that I can think of off the top of my head where I was like, I could build a WordPress website and I could 
you know, port it somehow into an app. There's, there's, there's probably more now, but when I was looking into this like a year ago, there's two ways that I could think of. The first way is, this is a more recent one, is like if you want to build a social media platform, there's a, plat- there's a platform called Buddy Boss. I think it's a forked um, company and, and software of Buddy Press from back in the day. I'm sure you could still use it, but like I know it was big back in the day. And Buddy Boss is like really nice. I actually have it on one of the sites. Uh, it's like a theme and a platform and it builds into a, like the, the theme itself has a bunch of social media functionality built in. So you can have, you can have connections, you can have like see the members and everything like that. You know, you can have posts, you can have like documents, photos and all that. It's literally like building your own Facebook. It's a really cool concept. Whether or not you should do it, it's totally different situation, different uh, answer, but the, the, it's a really cool concept. So if you want something like that, I know that they have something that's called like the buddy boss app. And it's, it's definitely not cheap. It's like, I don't know, hundreds of dollars a month or something like that. But somehow, some way, they take that database that you've created in WordPress and they port it into an app and then people could download your app. So think about, you know, uh, you know, like whatever, Facebook, but something that you create, right? You could have that on the web and then you could also have a, an app version of that through them. Again, cool concept lot more questions there, and but that's one way. Now I will say one caveat to that because when you think of an app, you think of creating an app and like being able to change all the different things and have all the data be like synced and everything between like the web. Like when you go on Facebook, on your app and on the computer, it's a different experience visually and maybe like, you know, UI in a sense, but it's the same thing. Like it's, it's, it's the same information just presented differently. You you the problem with wordpress is that it doesn't it doesn't seem to lend itself to porting over to a mobile environment if that makes sense right um so that's that's one concept so uh, long story short um that's one way to do that but i don't know if all of the information will come over or it's just like that the stuff that's in in you know enveloped in that theme if you create elementor pages in that thing i don't know how that would jive i don't think that necessarily works okay so that's one thing the next thing though is closer. I believe Adalo has this, I can't really remember, but maybe Bubble, maybe these other platforms do as well. They have integrations where you can call into like WooCommerce, for instance. So if you had a WooCommerce uh, website obviously built on WordPress, then you're gonna have your data in you know the database of that website, you know, whatever, and it's gonna be, you know, associated with that install of WooCommerce and everything's in there. I know I, I tried to do this, I was not successful because like I didn't get to this level of the, the stage of the project thing that I was working on. But you can take an app, you can design an app in like an Adalo builder. Again, I'm hoping that they do have it. I think, I think they did. But you can, you can design something in there and then you can connect via API or just you know, some sort of other authentication to the, Word, the WooCommerce WordPress database that, uh, for your site. And then the, that is the most important part. Think about if you had a web store that people could buy on the computer and buy on their phone. If the if the information is not synced, it is useless, <laughs> right? So it's like that's that's the whole problem there is like the connection. It's not that you can't build apps easily because you can nowadays. It's not that you can't build websites like easily or like powerful websites like you know, it's not like you can't do that. It's the connection between these different li- these literal different platforms of just the internet, the web, normal website and then you know, an application on iOS or on Android. This has kind of gotten a little outside the scope. I wanted to, I wanted to address that specifically, but that's, that's kind of my thought process to bring this back into, you know, part two of, should I be doing this? I have answered my question on the first end. There is definitely a way to make these websites faster and still make them like super functional and everything like that. I have not figured out where the ceiling is of, that I mentioned in the last video, like a level where it's like a level above this, you're going to have problems, but you can do it. And then a level above, you know, the next, the next level up is like, you should just build a custom web app. I have not figured out where that custom web app section is, but what I have figured out is if you can make a, a very functional website fast and optimized, then that level just kind of gets higher because then you can have jet engine, Elementor, WooCommerce all in the same site all doing like something that's like really amazing. Like if you could design a system and put all those pieces together and then make it fast, it's like, 
we're we did not spend the amount of time or energy or resources to build something like Apple, but we have kind of gotten something similar on the front end. The back end is a little different, but there's definitely still ways to make the back end streamlined for you internally and like your business or your client's business. I can make so many more videos on that. I want to keep this one short because I have a tendency to ramble, but that is, I know there was a lot there, but that is kind of where I'm at just as an update of that. I would love to hear more of your guys' feedback because I greatly appreciate it. It helps me and hopefully I can help you guys as well. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at is I'm still going to be doing this. I don't really have a, I don't, I'm not going to change anything. I still think WordPress is overall the best option, but don't kid yourself. If you are actually developing like a, like a platform, like a new software, uh, you know, uh, solution for something that's like crazy and never been done before, you should probably code that or you should probably use that, you know, use something else um, other than like WordPress. But I think that the ceiling for what WordPress can do is very high. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to continue to try to figure out where that actually is just from my own personal experience. And I'm more than happy to share that with you guys. So if you got any value out of this video, please click the like button, subscribe. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Like I said, uh, always happy to have a chat. So if you have any comments, throw them down in the section below. But uh, that's it. Thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you in the next one.